Hosea chapter 14. O Israel, <clears throat> tells who we're writing to, return unto the Lord thy God. Well, why would that be said if they were doing right? Why did Hosea start off with whoredom and adultery? And what has been filled between chapter 1 and chapter 14? Idolatry, imagery, calves, kissing idols, priests that are not of God. So Hosea marks in his writing, not only to the children of Israel, but it writes to us Gentiles, us in the church age. God is against religion. That's what Israel had. God is not pleased with them. They're not doing what God has told them to do, so they have a religion. Religion is not what God tells you to do, it's what man tells you. Religion is man-made. We saw chapter 13, verse 2, craftsmen. If it was God, it would say creator. Man made it. And if your image, well, let me take that back. If your God can be stamped anywhere, made in, that's not God. Explain to me God of the Bible, Jehovah, who made him and where did he come from? Explain to me. Evolution, this big bang, this big park, where, where did it come from? God is nothing, and yet he's being. God never had a beginning, but he's always been. He says, I am. Hosea shoots down religion. Religions are man-made. Jesus Christ is God-approved. You know where these people who Hosea is writing to, you know where they end up with their golden calves and their images and their idolatry? Burning in hell with all the other religions, both past, present, and future that Hosea has written. Realize when Hosea is writing to the children of Israel, I mean, this is a short chapter. I'm, I'm not on a bunny trail here. It says, Return to Lord thy God. They are in the same hell that Babylonian worship is in. They are in the same hell where Pharaoh was worshipped as the God ruler. They are in the same hell as Tammuz. They did not return to Lord thy God. And if they died in their sins, they went to hell being God's people. And that church will proclaim, I come out of that church. We're all made in the image of God. Really? So what you're telling me is God's a sinner. Because I'm made in sin. Job says, at the time I was born, my mother's womb was sparked by trouble. The Bible says, all have sinned, come to short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death. If I'm made in the image of God, God is death and God is a sinner. No, the Bible says I'm made in the image of Adam. Adam was made in the image of God. He had eternal life until he blew it. And you know what God wanted Adam to do? You know what God wanted Eve to do? He wanted to return to the Lord thy God. The Bible says prepare to meet, meet thy God. Paul writes... To Gentiles, Paul writes to Christians, God is our creator. Why would you say return if you weren't there? For thou hast fallen by thine iniquities, not God. Fallen is not a good state in the Bible. I don't think I could I don't think you can find anywhere in the Bible where the word fall, fallen, or any variations of that word 
Well, prefix and suffix. I don't think I can find anything that could result in any good from the Bible with the word fall. Unless it talks about the season. But I'm talking about the verb. What good can you get from a fall? And again, I would think they fell down on his feet and worshipped him. But man in his man in his fallen state, you can't just walk up to God upright. You gotta fall down in your knees. You gotta fall down with your head to the ground. That's humbling. And that's what we are. We're a fallen nature. Take with you word. Turn to the Lord. Okay. Return to the Lord. Turn to the Lord. I said just prayer. But did you turn to the Lord? Say unto him, take away all iniquity. Now there's someone who is repenting. They have turned to God and say, you know what, Lord, take away all my sins. That's what happens when a man believes on the Lord Jesus Christ at the first time. When he comes to Christ as a Savior, Lord, take all my sins and put them in the blood. It's beyond just a, a, a words of a prayer. Receive us graciously. There are people who go, you know, the Lord has to do it to me. There are people who think, you know, when I show up in church, all of heaven is pleased. So you got to seek God to clean you of your sin, to wash you of your sin. And you got to seek a gracious God. As we've been studying in church with, with the tribulation and the rapture and all that, what kind of God that saves you from your sins and puts you through the tribulation period? Is that grace? So we will render the calves of our lips. Well, they're, they're acknowledging what they're doing. God wants them to say, hey, we've been kissing those cows. But they don't do it. See, you can't say, oh, I've sinned. Forgive me, Lord. <laughs> I'm saved. You can't say that. Lord, forgive me for all the sins I've done today. All right, that's clean. God told you, I want you to name that specific sin you're doing. That I mentioned in verse 13. I mean, chapter 13. Verse 2, kiss the calf. I want you to tell me what you did. I want you to tell me what your sin is. Don't come in with a, with a blanket of sin. I mean, listen, when I first got saved, yeah, I, you know, Lord, forgive me for all the sins I've done today. But you grow in grace, gracious. And First John 1, 9 says, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins if we confess our sins. Confess. What do you do when you confess? You walk up to your boss. Boss, I did wrong today. That's going to do you a lot of good. That ain't going to help your boss in a company. What would you do wrong? So when someone says a blanket prayer without mentioning what they've done. Now usually when I deal with somebody and they trust Christ, they say, I will... This point right here, I let them be silent and just say, listen, you just name all the sins that come to your heart and to your lips. Because you're not doing it to me. You're doing it to the blood of Jesus Christ. But confess your sin. And if somebody says, well, I can't name any. Have you read First John? It says, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And they say, well, I, I never have, but they come up and say, well, I can't think of any. You got to do the salvation route again. You got to remind him not only is he a sinner, but what are sins? And in America, you know what you got to do to Americans? You got to teach them what sins are because the television promotes everything. You know what the sins of America are today? Reading your Bible. That's a sin. Prayer is a sin to Americans. 
Going to church is a sin. You mean you can't work because of something with church? That's a sin. My boss, I, I thank God, he, he, you know, he, he, I don't work Saturday into Sunday morning and all that. And he told me, he says, well, you got, you got some activity you're doing. You mean church. You can't even say it. God wants them to return. God wants them to turn. And God wants you to name If you haven't, you're not saved. Now, you may not be able to name every single sin, but I guarantee if the Holy Spirit is working in your heart, the top ten will show up eventually. You know, once I was saved and all that, I walked away from, you know, April 1987, and I was saved. And I started living my Christian life, started doing that, and then certain things started popping up. Well, wait a minute, that's wrong. I didn't alibi. I didn't try to alibi. Lord, you know, and then you know what? I need to quit this, Lord. I'm having a hard time quitting this, Lord. I gotta, it's not right, Lord. Lord, what's the problem here? I'm saving. I'm still doing this. And I've gotten the victory over those sins. They're gone. I hated them. And the Lord got me to the point with those sins. You know what? Only the Lord could t take care of it. And I can only say, well, how'd you quit How'd you quit drinking? I don't even remember how. I just remember one day, that was it. I had no more drink. I don't even know what the day of that was. So how'd you quit smoking? I got angry because when, when I went to the pharmacist with a prescription for the past, he told me it was going to be $22. You gotta pay twenty. I was paying twenty dollars for a carton of cigarettes. Shows how old I am. I wasn't gonna pay twenty-two dollars for a patch. And at that point, uh, I believe it was CVS or I know where the drugstore is today. It's not a drugstore no more. But I know my Bethel where it was when, when the Lord had me quit smoking. I walked away from that counter angry because of twenty dollars over a patch over a carton of cigarettes, and that was it. I know it was the third sun third. Monday of January. Did you ever try to quit before? Oh, yeah, I tried to quit on my own terms. But God wants you to confess. God wants you to name. And God wants you to get away from it. Think about sin as a, as a cobra or a rattlesnake. Is it something you want to go back to? I... You bit me. Oh, I just feel so poisoned. Keep biting me more. You gotta hate it. Asher shall not save us. Now, Asher is, an, is a is a nation that they've run to. Help us. Here's some money. Be an ally to us. What's the problem here? They're running to man and not God. Who do you run to when your problems come? Bank. Doctor such and such, therapist such and such, Christian psychologist such and such. Do you run to God? That woman in the in the gospel spent all she had on doctors, written by a medical doctor, then finally came to Jesus for a cure. Is it wrong to go to a doctor? Absolutely not. But did you go to God first? We will not ride upon horses. What's that term? We're not going to have a cavalry. We're not going to have an army. We're going to have God. You know when the Lord Jesus Christ comes from Israel, you know who's on the horse? Jesus is. You know who's on the horses following him? The church. Neither will we say any more to the work of our hands. Oh, man-made. The craftsman. You know what you're going to say? Ye are our God. We're not going to say that no more. There will become a time that God will tell Israel, and they will tell God, that's it. We're not having any of this no more. You know what you got to tell God to be saved? That's not my God no more. 
Not, you know, it may be hard to put away. But you gotta say, it's not my God. You gotta return to God. You gotta turn from that God. You gotta confess that God. What is a God, small g? Anything that takes the place of God, big G. Try some Sunday early morning repenting of your God being a fishing boat when church is going on. Hmm? And you make out your checks. Oh, forgot to make a check out to God. The other For in thee, God, the fatherless findeth mercy. They weren't finding. Have you read Isaiah? Have you read Jeremiah? Have you read Ezekiel? They were not getting good treatment from their brethren. You know, we're almost living these days. We got plenty of children today that are fatherless. And we're not talking about death. We don't even know who the father is. They've had a life without a dad. And yet God reaches out. God the father says, you know, you believe on my son, the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be into my family and I'll be your father. That's mercy. I, God, will heal their backsliding. At their period called the tribulation period, I'll heal them. What, what, do you, what can you get that verse? God takes a rod and beats their butt, and he looks down. Uh oh, you got a you got a sore there. Let me put a let me put some ointment and band aid on it. I'm not sorry I did that because you deserve that, but let me take care of it. You may have all the words are called backsliding. And the Bible's former corrections on the backside. You ought not be on your back. You ought to be on your forward. I will love them freely. Isn't that the word that Eve took out? When talking to Satan? Isn't that the word that God adds back? In Revelation 22, I think he says, I'll give them the tree of life freely, something like that. That word was removed in Genesis 3 by Eve. It was spoken by God in Genesis 2, and it is returned in Revelation 22 in the eternity. You know what that freely means? It don't cost anything. God does not have on the gates of heaven the credit card symbol. But you know what that lovely, you know what that love them freely costs? He said it's free. You know what it costs? It costs Isaiah 53. And it's blasphemy for, the, for the Israel today to say Isaiah 53 is all about them. My salvation didn't cost me anything, but what did it cost Jesus? Have you ever had anybody take a cat of nine tails and rip it across your back where the Bible speaks about it was just ripped open? That was done in Jesus Christ. Now watch this statement. I will love them freely, colon. See that colon? That's the church age. Christ has died on the cross. Isaiah 53. For my anger, what's that? That's the great tribulation period. 
is turned away from him. There's the second advent in one verse. You see Christ dying on the cross. You see the church age. You see the tribulation period. And you see him returning back. Don't mess with colons. Don't mess with commas. Don't mess with periods. Is, could you see what you do if you change? I forget what to go. Punctuation marks? Is that what that's called? I just did English. And I don't even know what it's called. Never mind words. And we, we already read don't add or change or subtract from the word. Don't even mess with the punctuation. And I don't know anything about Hebrew. We're in a Hebrew book right now. It's spoken. I don't think Hebrew has colons and periods and all that. And in Elizabeth English 1611, that colon shows up, and that colon describes us today. Our salvation is free. And the next point of time will be God's anger upon the Jew. And then he'll lift that anger by saying, Honey, yes, Jesus, get on your horse. Let's go. We're going on our honeymoon. We're gonna pick up. We gotta pick up some people on the way. How's that one? I will be as the dew unto Israel. Study dew. Dew has a need. Dew is is the purest form of, of water you can get on this earth. He shall grow as the lily. That's Israel. So study lily. Jesus said, I'm the lily of the valley. Israel is likened to a lily. And it's not even mentioned in the that he shall grow as a lily. So study what a lily is and how it grows. It becomes a beautiful flower. And cast forth his roots as Lebanon. Now I don't know about a lily, I believe is a bowl. But he's going to cast forth, his roots are going to go out. They're going to spread. They're going to go overspread. Roots in the ground keeps the plant stable. The further the roots go, the more stable that plant is going to get. And if it finds a water source, man, it's going to suck that water source up and it's going to be a healthy plant. If there is a river or a water source by a plant and that plant can sense it, he's going to try everything he can get to get that root to that water. His branches. Well, we're not talking about a lily no more. Lilies don't have branches. Shall spread. So Jesus said that there are branches that have been cut off during this time. Now they're healthy branches back on the vine. Jesus said, I'm the vine. Here they are back. In Jesus Christ. Scripture with scripture. The gospel. And Jesus said I'm the vine. So these are the branches. Israel needs Jesus Christ to be saved. Even in the millennium. Even in eternity. And his beauty. Shall be as the olive tree. Type of Holy Spirit. So you're asked a question. What tree does God think is beautiful in being be an olive tree? And his smell as Lebanon. Now what would that smell be? The cedar. You ever smelled cedar? So he's he's a tree that's just spreading out. He's as beautiful as an olive tree, and he smells like cedar. It keeps the moths away. Then Jesus says something about where moths and can corrupt, moths and rust. 
So Israel, under the Lord Jesus Christ in the millennium, won't track them off. They'll be, get out of here. They that dwell under his shadow, the tree, Israel, shall return. They shall revive as the corn. How many kernels of corn does is produced on one plant? It's fruitful and multiply and replenish and grow as the vine. Man, there's no stopping vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Grapes. Fresh grapes. Ephraim, there he is again, shall say, What have I to do any more with idols? True repentance. E Ephraim say, you know what? I'm, I've had it with him. That's it. I'm done. No more golden plates. No more glasses for Morarchi, whatever his name is. I'm going to turn back to God. I have heard him. I bet you, I bet you the Mormons will claim this verse out of all the chapters 13 in the Bible. And observe him. I am like a green fir tree. <clears throat> From me is thy fruit found. Now a fir tree doesn't have fruit. It has cones. And when you crush the twigs or the foliage, it causes a pleasant odor. And sometimes they're used to stuff pillows. And when you buy anything that says pine scented, it comes from the fir tree. So what would be the fruit? It's not an apple. It's the scent. Have you seen all the scents? The scent of wine? The scent of Lebanon? The fir tree that has to be crushed to smell it? God crushing the Jews in the tribulation period brings forth a savor, a smell to God. You remember something else that was crushed, that was used for service of God? Wasn't the olives crushed for the oil for the lamps and the anointing? Some of the best things to God are things that have been bruised. The best person that will come to the Lord Jesus Christ as, a sa as his savior is someone who's been bruised. Someone who is crushed. That's why Jesus said, you know, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to enter in heaven. Because what hardship does a rich man get? Man, you got a guy who's been drinking his entire life, lost his family, lost his house, lost everything. And man, he sits inside a road puking inside of a grave. And you bring him the good news and, and the hope and the, and the joy and the love of Lord Jesus Christ. Man, he's going to whack on to that. Like a whole bowl in a Subway sandwich. He'll take any hope. A rich man will hope I don't want to do with my money. You know when the church was, was persecuted in the book of Acts? You, that's when it grew. When Paul got right, the church didn't really grow that much. But when Paul was chasing them, oh boy, it grew. You know why the church is not growing today and there's no revival? Because it's not being persecuted. It's getting along. It's living by the Constitution. We have rights. And you got Jesus Christ standing outside the door knocking. Will you let me in? No, we got bingo. But we call it Jesus. You know, J47. Jesus! Isn't that calling Jesus' name in vain? And I've done that in Baptist churches. It's not bingo. It's Jesus. But it's done in a Baptist church. I've, I've gone through all that mess. I've gone through the Halloween party a day after Halloween at the church. I've gone through all that. 
Nothing new in the sun for me. All right, here's the conclusion. Another book down. Who is wise? Oh boy. Who on college campus asked that question? See the hand. That'd be like asking someone in prison, who, who, who's in here not guilty? He shall understand these things. If you were to bring 14 chapters of Hosea to anybody on the street, anybody you come up to, would they understand? Would a Christian who is saved in a church understand the book of Hosea? Haven't you seen judgment of God? Haven't you seen how God reacts to judgment? Have you seen what God says that He does not under He does not like? Have you seen what God calls an abomination? Oh, it's an aid to worship. You don't have no understanding, no wisdom. He shall understand these things. What thing? What Hosea just read, fourteen chapters. Prudent. Who is prudent? He shall know them. Do you understand what we've read? Can you go through the book of Hosea and, and know that you're a sinner and realize God does warn those before he casts judgment that God has things he hates? You see that from Hosea. You got wisdom. You got understanding. You are called prudent. You have knowledge. You've been given knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, all three in that one verse. Now, you, you can't understand the whole book, but do you understand the principle that Hosea is written to us by God? You have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that no college idiot president understands. you got things right now that the President of the United States doesn't understand. you got things right now that a television preacher doesn't understand. you got things here that a Pope doesn't understand. A nun doesn't understand. For the ways of the Lord are right. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. So you can't have to please God the ways of man. You can't have the craftsman. Wrong answer. My priest tells me. Well, my pastor says. My mom said. Grandma, those are not the proper ways. Those are not the proper responses. You need to get the ways of the Lord are right. And the just shall walk in it. You want to be just with God? Find out the way of the Lord. You know what the Bible calls it just and had a really perverted life? Lot. But he did the ways of the Lord. You can be in a perverted uh, circumstance as Lot was and still be called just. Where's your heart? Where's your motive? The just shall walk in them. But the transgressors, those who don't walk in the ways of the Lord, those that are not just, shall fall therein. Again, there's that fall. Not funny to fall. When we, we make up we make fun of that joke there that come out, help me I'm falling and I can't get up. Is that really a joke? Is that really something funny to laugh at? You know, they found humans old that have fallen, dead, who have been there days, not weeks, sometimes months. I guarantee there have been people who climb mountains, stuff like that, have fallen, and no one's ever even known. Listen is missing. Falls can do all kinds of things. You know what they say the most number one spot to have a fall or accident is in your own home.
You don't want to. You do not want to conclude your life, especially in the Bible, with a fall. It's not what you want. You want to have it the way of the Lord. 